my name is Mario Baranzini. I work as a developer, mostly in Python and Java, for a small Swiss company. Um, I'm I'm uh, sometimes I work as consultant or teacher for some in some topics, and I I always try to improve my skills, and so I'm always a, stu a student. I come from Switzerland, from the Italian part, Italian-speaking part of Switzerland. And uh, as I said, I work on a small company called OpenGIS.ch. We are specialized in open, open source GIS, in uh, QGIS development, and QField is our product. Okay, Today, today's presentations, in fact, as Tim uh, uh, told before, there are two presentations on more or less the on uh, related uh, topics. I will start uh, with a presentation about uh, strategies, advantages, and uh, obstacles in migrations from uh, proprietary softwares to open source softwares. Then, uh, after my presentation, uh, Vincent Picave will talk about the alternatives of uh, proprietary software in the open source world. And uh, in the end, uh, the last presentation is by Marco Bernasocchi about uh, more about economic aspects of migrations so we try to uh, to split uh, this interesting topic in three parts and uh, to avoid to repeat uh, ourselves in the presentations so i will start with a very generic and high level introduction of this topic um so uh, we, we will talk about migration. Um, we will talk about uh, uh, converting uh, our uh, architecture to an open source one, but not only, or we are not only talking about tools, we are talking about da data, uh, knowledge, and everything. First of all, the tools that uh, we have to consider in a migration are for, uh, for sure a desktop application, the GIS we use on the desktop, a mobile GIS, a mobile solution. We often in our uh, ecosystem we have a, a mobile solution and of course a web solution to, to publish maps uh, on the web. We need a server, uh, normally, if we want a web solution, and a database, and uh, for sure other tools. These are all, to all tools we have to consider in our migration. We will see, as I said after with Vincent, some uh, open source alternatives to, to these uh, softwares. But uh, not only, we have work workflows. We have, uh, for example, scripts to import da data, to convert, to analyze data. We have the knowledge, knowledge uh, in, our, in the employees or in the company and that uh, uh, need to be updated to the new solution. We have documentation and everything have to be migrated in a, if we want to migrate in an open source uh, solution. But why? Why should we change uh, our solution, maybe our working solution, that uh, we spent a lot of time and uh, money to, to build uh, to convert everything to open source? What are the advantages? For example, some of the advantages could be the, the freedom, the freedom from the vendor lock-ins. In fact, we can know exactly what our software does. 
and we have the possibility to modify it, to change it uh, as we want. We didn't. Uh, we don't depend on our company. Uh, we, we have the guarantee that our code will, will always be available in the future, and we will be able to access our data uh, regardless of the will of uh, a company, because everything is open, and uh, we have access to, to the source code. Also, uh, the speed uh, of improvements, if we want a new feature, if we want uh, a modification in the code, we can always do it uh, ourselves or ask uh, to a company to do that. Uh, uh, we don't depend on the, on the only on, one, on the company that uh, sells the, the software you use. And we have also the possibility to con contribute with our modification or our knowledge to the community. Uh, for sure, there are also obstacles in all that. Uh, some of the obstacles are easily uh, solved. Other can be more challenging. Uh, but uh, if we know them, it could be easy to prevent them. Some of the obstacles could be the, the vendor lock-in. Of course, the vendor of a proprietary solution uh, doesn't want to uh, uh, doesn't want we migrate uh, to other solution solutions and. Uh, uh, they normally don't make uh, everything easy to export all the data or the information in other systems. And so uh, we have sometimes to really investigate to make uh, reverse engineering in the formats, in the files, uh, or how the data is stored to be able to export everything. Um, okay. We need to st to train our staff to the new solutions and uh, uh, be able to uh, to to win the resistance to to the change. Um, often there are tools. Maybe come back. There are tools that allows this part of the migration quite easily. But uh, uh, for some parts, we really need to, to make a, a deep analysis of the, of the, for example, of the format or how the data are stored. And we need a, a, a real uh, deep investigation. And we have to create some customized tools to, to do that, but uh, can be quite easily in an open source uh, world uh, because there are uh, more and more uh, companies that can work and uh, can create tools uh, to allow, allow uh, exportation of data. Okay. Uh, it's not easy to define a solution that uh, works for everyone to to make a migration uh, it depends a lot on the software that it's used on which part of the existing architecture is to be migrated one possible approach that we use in different solution is that to have uh, the um, the data to make the data accessible from the old system and uh, in parallel from the new open source system so we can access and work on the same data um, and uh, then change uh, uh, a step uh, at a time the, the, the other parts. 
we will see an example after of uh, one one of this part that we uh, we we build a tool to to convert one of the parts of a complete uh, GIS architecture. <laughs> okay. This example uh, concern is related to the symbology. Uh, we had uh, last year a customer that asked us, uh, in fact, it's a public administration in Switzerland that they always worked with the uh, ESRI symbology and they had uh, built like 1,200 uh, 1, symbols in ESRI, but they wanted to share the symbols also with users that uh, use uh, QGIS or other uh, open source software. And they asked us how uh, to export, uh, to convert these 1,000 symbols into uh, something usable into QGIS. These uh, uh, symbols were composed by points, lines, polygons, and everything. And uh, there was an extensive use of his fonts. And uh, so the requirements uh, were to create a XML library of the symbols that uh, uh, to be imported into QGIS. And, uh, don't use proprietary fonts. So remove all the fonts and replace them with uh, something else. The difficulties, uh, no tools uh, existed to automatically do what we wanted, what we needed. Um, now there are some, propriet some proprietary tools that uh, that uh, allow to export uh, symbols from ESRI, but uh, they didn't work perfectly on all our symbols. It was impossible, for example, to uh, avoid the use of ESRI fonts and uh, the quality of the symbols with Im images uh, was very bad. So um, another problem was the dif difficulty to interpret the uh, ESRI symbols are all stored in binary files uh, that looks uh, something like this. It was very difficult to, to understand uh, and uh, in ArcGIS uh, there isn't a way to, uh, to create a script to export the information about symbols. It's impossible, uh, um, unlike uh, in QGIS, uh, it's possible, for example, with a Python script to get all the information of the symbology you use <laughs> using a script. So how could we do that? By end, uh, was not a super interesting uh, idea. We didn't want to, to draw 1,000 symbols and uh, we wanted to create a tool to do automatically this uh, conversion to be used in the future by everyone. But at first uh, it seemed almost impossible to, to be able to understand the structure of, uh, of these binary files, but uh, we investigated a little and we discovered that in the open source world someone already started to build uh, a tool that tried to um, to understand the structure of the ESRI style files and uh, this project was created but one by one of the QGIS developers Niall Dawson in Australia and uh, we, we decided to work with uh, him and to contribute to this project with uh, founds and with code. And we, we started to really uh, reverse engineering all the binary files and try to, 
to to convert all the symbols with an automatically tool. And the result is called uh, Slayer. Uh, it's an open source tool. It's uh, a tool that allows to convert almost every symbol uh, from ESRI into a QGIS symbol. It's an open source tool. And uh, uh, the, the main developer is now uh, searching for found uh, via via crowdfunding to improve new features or to be able, for example, to convert uh, a MixD project, so an ESRI project, into a QGIS project. And I will briefly show you a small video how this tool uh, looks like. So this is a plugin for QGIS called Slayer. So once the plugin is installed, there are two algorithms in the toolbox that can be used. We can select a dot .style file, so an ESRI symbology library. We can set some parameters like the file where to store the converted symbols. We can define a, a folder where to store some pictures. And we run this, uh, this algorithm in like one minute. All the 1,000 uh, symbols are translated. There are some small parts that uh, maybe some something that exists in ESRI symbol doesn't exist in QGIS symbols, so small parts are not completely converted. On these 1,200 symbols, I had to uh, fix manually like 10, maybe 10 symbols to, to fix some things. All the rest was uh, perfect. And uh, once our library is created, we can, using the style manager in QGIS, import our library. We see all the converted symbols. We can select some of them or all of them and import into, into QGIS. Okay, so uh, this uh, was a general introduction about uh, the migration topic. Uh, this example of uh, uh, this tool we created, I think it's a good example that show, shows um, that uh, something, something seems uh, maybe very difficult to do, but with uh, good uh, investigation and analysis it's i think it's quite of uh, always uh, possible to create a tool to convert everything and the big advantage is that once the work is done the tool uh, is available for everyone to do the same and make uh, things easier for the for the others and maybe make the world a better place thank you Thank you, Maria. Uh, we can take some questions from the floor. The gentleman sitting on the floor. Uh, Just repeat the question when you ask it for the microphone. Okay, all right. Keep the microphone. Yeah. So two things. First, uh, I went into the repo and I didn't see a license file, so it will be nice to get a clarification 
about the license and also about the status of the project because last time I saw uh, it was almost a year before the code uh, got updated. We're thankful for everything you release, obviously, but we'll s want to see how uh, we can make it progress more. The second thing is we're working on something similar, but for Layer X and the results of uh, ArcGIS Pro, and we'll be happy to cooperate, both open source and commercial level. Thanks for your questions. On the GitHub repository, there is a link on Nayals, the developer of this tool, uh, the main developer. Uh, there is a link on his uh, website uh, with more explanation about the, the status of the project and how to contribute. And uh, uh, what uh, we have done, it's all released, open source, but uh, he I know he's working on more uh, features that maybe are not uh, uh, released yet, and uh, but uh, maybe you can contact di him directly, and for sure he has an answer. Any more questions from the floor? Okay, thank you, Mario. Thank you very much. Thank you.